Hi, welcome. Sunday here. Today we're going to go over creating your signature trips roadmap. This is one of my favorite topics. We're really going to be making sure that you have trips that are going to ensure that you've got a profitable core offer in your travel business. So let's get started. But before we get started, let's determine why it's even important for you to have signature trips inside of your travel business. But listen, if you're not even interested in doing group trips, don't think that this isn't for you because you can still have signature itineraries as your go-to core offers. So let's talk about why it's even important for you to have signature trips inside of your travel business. First and foremost, it allows you to maximize profits by having unique offers. You want to have these unique offers that are tailored according to your desires in terms of what you want to learn and immerse yourself in. The number two reason is that it really does enhance your ability to sell better because you're going to be focused on specific destinations and or itineraries that are going to really centralize the way that you do your content, uh, the way you do your promotions and that kind of stuff. The third is it really also allows you to build strong partner relationships with your suppliers. So if you have a core set of signature offers that you create, you can forge some very powerful relationships. And then I've already kind of alluded to this, but your ability to really uh, have effective marketing and sales and promotion strategies that are focused around specific destinations. Doesn't mean that you can't sell other items, but it really is going to allow you to have an intentional and focused area inside of your business. This really also allows you to establish goals in your travel business around these signature trip offers. My objective for you in this masterclass is really uh, threefold. The first one is, is I want you to really understand what it means to strategically plan and select specific destinations as a part of your core offering. My second objective is to ensure that you have a real sound operational and partnership management approach when it comes to building out these signature trips. And then my third objective is to make sure that you have a clear understanding of what uh, effective marketing and sales around these signature trips looks like. So let's get started in terms of what we're going to go over today. So our first objective is to talk through what it means to get through strategic planning and destination insight. You know, the first thing I always say is you don't really get the opportunity to think about yourself when it comes to your business because we are in a service industry. However, when it comes to building out your signature trips, I want to start with you. I want you to pick a destination or destinations, plural, that you're interested in, interested in learning about. Where do you want to go? What is something that really uh, are you passionate about in terms of destination? Because you're really going to be talking about these destinations a lot. So we want to start with you and what you like. Do not pick destinations just because you think that they're going to sell well. Make sure that you're interested in because listen, it's easy, easier for sure to sell something that you're excited about, right? Because your enthusiasm is going to be contagious. It's going to show through in the content that you create and the videos that you create when you're talking about it. And it really does attract based on that enthusiasm. So what items are on your bucket list? Where have you been dreaming about exploring? Start with you when it comes to picking out your signature destinations. And then after that, what you need to do is then connect your interest to your client's desires. So for example, if you're interested in, let's say Spain and Portugal, cause you love food and you want to learn all about Spain and Portugal, then what we want to do is create that bridge 
to your client's desires, right? So what about Spain and Portugal can you discover that your clients are going to be interested in? So maybe it's culinary. Maybe that's what you're going to focus on. Maybe it's the history. Maybe it's the architecture. Maybe it's uh, the beaches. Whatever that is, it's your job to connect the desire that you have to learn about a destination to what your clients will be interested in relative to their desires. So it's your responsibility to create that bridge. And once you create that bridge, it really allows you to unearth some hidden gems about the destination, right? Destinations that not, may not be mainstream, right? To most people, you can identify some really great experiences about those destinations. Your personal interest in these lesser known places can lead to really unique and exclusive offers that your clients won't find elsewhere. Let me tell you a story. I was talking to a client a couple weeks ago and she is moving to Puerto Rico and she's been to Puerto Rico several times. And really what she's doing is she's creating um, packages around Puerto Rico for um, sea, uh, for jewelry artists around um, sea shells, say that uh, 10 times, right? And so uh, diving for these seashells and making unique jewelry, right? So that is a unique destination. Those are going to be that, that, those, um, that experience is going to be a signature trip that she's going to create. So the point is really create a narrative around the destinations that you do. And we'll talk about this all throughout this training, but really about what's hidden about the destination that you can discover, even if you've not been before, right? Your passion for a particular location is really going to be the, the, the linchpin that gets people interested in it based on what you talk about. So let's move to the next area. Once you identify the destination that you want to explore or create your signature on, what do you need to learn about the destination that you selected? This is really going to be about you researching and understanding the destination. This is where the groundwork for you um, and your signature trip begins. Lay the foundation for creating truly engaging and authentic travel experiences. So even if you've never been to a particular destination, that's okay. It's still your responsibility to learn all that you need to learn about the destination. So we want to look into what is a tourist hotspot? Like what, what do tourists find traditionally at the destination that you have uh, picked? You need to make sure that you understand the essence of that particular location. What is the history behind it? What are the local legends and stories found around the destination? Make sure that you have a deep understanding so that you can create those trips that are rich in context and also meaning for your clients. What you want to do here is also gather some insights culturally about the destination and what are some of the local practices. This includes understanding customs, traditions, and societal norms in that particular destination. It's also about making sure that you respect and incorporate these elements into travel, the travel plans that you create for your clients, and make sure that they get an authentic and respectful experience for your client. I'll give you another example. You know, I have been to Dubai this current year two times, and you know, a lot of travel advisors tell me that, oh, Dubai, you know, they don't respect women and, you know, there's all these religious contexts, right? But before we went to Dubai, we really wanted to make sure that we understood as a female how that's going to impact us, right? So we understood in the, the group of people that we took, we explained to them the customs, the kind of dress that they need to have, um, and just how to be respectful in a way uh, coherent to the particular um, destination. You want to make sure that you understand the local practices. Dubai is another example, right? If you go to Dubai during Ramadan, you need to understand that there's a fasting period, you know, for the first 12 hours of the day, right? Make sure that you are respectful of that and that you understand what the etiquettes of that particular culture. There's no hugging. There's no public displays of affection. 
that's also something that's unique to Dubai, right? This ensures that your clients are well prepared and can fully immerse themselves in the local culture without, you know, any faux pas of sort that are going to occur. So make sure that you understand the cultural um, and local practices of the destinations that you pick. And there, and if you don't know, we'll talk about how you can get some of that information yourself. Your, your objective in these signature destinations or trips is really to create a unique experience that they can't find anywhere else. This could be exclusive, vi um, exclusive visits to specific hotspots that are at the destination. So for example, if you're doing a Spain and Portugal, right? An exclusive vi visit to a vineyard, a private cooking class with the local chef or a guided tour of a hidden historical site. These are all unique experiences that you can offer your clients. The more you can incorporate this unique unique experience is a part of your trip, the more it's going to stand apart from sort of standard packages that your clients can either craft themselves or that they're going to see on the internet. Understanding local practices and etiquettes is also crucial. This ensures that your clients, are, again, are well prepared. So making sure that you tie those unique experiences to what's going on in the local destination is going to be key. So another way for you to select a destination is really to understand what's trending. What, what's a hot spot right now? Where are people talking about? Um, up to you to stay informed on trends and emerging destinations is really important. What places are starting to gain popularity? What new experiences are becoming available? So for, you know, at the time of this recording, one of the things that is really uh, trending is wellness travel. Another one is sustainable travel. What does that mean? Really understanding what those trends look like. What's new and becoming available to travelers? Being up to date allows you to offer your clients fresh and exciting options. So these, let's talk about some ways that you can stay informed. Obviously, social media is a great way and influencers. So understanding what influencers are actually uh, associated with your clients is really important. You can refer to travel industry reports and publications. You can also do networking and uh, participating in industry events, online travel forums. If you look at below this training, I've included a guide for ideas and inspiration on how you as a travel advisor can stay informed. So go ahead and click that guide, take a look at that guide and make sure that you sign up for um, industry events. Make sure that you've, you're on the email list for uh, travel industry reports. And there's some ideas inside of the guide below. The next thing is, is that you want to make sure that you are uh, you've done your research around the destination, right? That you've done the deep dive, that you understand the destination, that you understand the cultural norms and local practices of that particular destination. You've identified some unique things that your clients can participate in and that you understand what kind of trends or you're informed, not only around trends, but you also need to be informed around any political or news issues going on for the destination because you never want to be blindsided around that as well. So let's talk about how you can plan for your uh, signature experience. So planning signature experiences, particularly differentiating yourself between destinations you are well versed in versus new destinations is really critical. This distinction is vital in ensuring that your signature trips offer authentic and high quality experiences. So if you have selected a destination that you've never been on, my recommendation is that you do a discovery um, trip to make sure that you um, understand the destination yourself. I cannot overstate this enough. This is this just isn't a preliminary site visit. This is really your opportunity to immerse yourself in the destination, understand the nuances of that particular destination, and identify what would appeal 
to your clients. Consider selling these discovery trips to a few individuals such as VIP clients, friends, or family. This approach really will allow you to explore and evaluate the destination while offering an exclusive experience to a select group. I've used this approach myself. It really is effective and it really does give you the opportunity to not only make sales, but also get your marketing material up um, here. You can use these discovery trips to gather marketing materials. Just like I mentioned, this is your chance to capture images, create engaging videos, and collect stories that will help you promote your upcoming signature trip launch. There's a significant difference between marketing a destination just because you've heard about it or read about it than actually having experienced it yourself, right? I can tell you the actual experience is worth so much when it comes to your marketing and also your enthusiasm around that experience. Your firsthand insights are critical. The other thing is, is if you've been on a destination and you've already done that, and let's say maybe you, um, you've already been to Spain and Portugal and you know all about it. This is also another way of how you can highlight it. So if you've already been to a destination, you love it, it should be on your signature if you already understand those nuances. But what I will tell you is, is that when you're familiar with it allows you to leverage your expertise and existing knowledge. You can talk about your experiences in your promotions. You can craft more detailed and nuanced ex um, experiences based on your past visit. This expertise allows you to offer a depth of experience and knowledge to your clients in your content and in your market. Remember whether it's a place you're visiting for the first time or a well-loved destination, you've been to multiple times, the key is to create experiences that are not just trips, but transformational journeys, right? Connected to your client. Why your client would have an amazing time there really is going to be critical. For new destinations, let the discovery trip be the foundation upon which you build an enticing, well informed signature offer. For familiar places, use your in-depth knowledge to craft these experiences. So what we've covered thus far is, is you've got to select your destinations and maybe you already have that, but you want to make sure that you've got some adequate learning and research done for the destination so you can speak intelligently around that and make sure that you've planned for the destination. Do you need to do a discovery trip? Is that going to be something that you need to plan for as a part of your signature trip roadmap? Do you need to do discovery and then actually plan for the launch or can you go straight to launch? That's one of the things that you're going to want to make sure that you have clear. All right, so let's talk about operational excellence and partnership management in objective two. The first thing is, is that you're going to want to have some financial planning. Here's some tips for financial planning for your trips. I really want you guys to really be thinking about how do you manage the cash, right? So from a financial perspective, let's focus specifically on cash management. As a travel advisor, I totally understand the need to balance between cash outlay and fulfilling contracted space. I have a lot of travel advisors that go straight to contracting space and then they struggle with um, meeting the contract terms of the minimums. So let's really talk about how you can strategically manage your cash outlay. If you can maintain a healthy cash flow, ensuring that you have the funds available when needed without overextending yourself financially, it's really going to eliminate any stress that you may have. Um, but it really does require some planning on your um, part to do this. You want to plan out your expenses and understand specifically when that cash is needed and make sure that you have the demand for your trip so that you're not um, you know, dipping into your own pocket when it comes to paying for your trips. 
So you want to make sure that you've picked suppliers that allow you to have some reservation flexibility. And what I mean by that is, is that you seek out those kinds of partnerships where you can reserve space temporarily while you market the trip. The more you can do this, definitely the more that you can validate that the trip is a viable trip that people that you can get sales for the trip. It also helps you manage your cash outlay um, and it really does allow you to minimize the risk of tying up funds and unsold inventory. The worst thing that you can do is do a contract you've not and you're not able to sell it and then you had to put down a big deposit and that kind of thing. So we want to find suppliers that are going to allow you to have some level of reservation um, flexibility inside of your booking. Um, you want to make sure that from a profitability and pricing perspective, you know, I'm always going to tell you that you want to price for profitability. You want to make sure that you are going to make money on this trip, right? You don't want to uh, decide on a signature trip. You price it out. You can't sell it and you're not really making any money. That's a recipe for a disaster. So we want to start with that from the beginning. We want to do some investigation on what the cost of the trip is, what the market is going to allow from a pricing perspective, and make sure that you can have a healthy margin built into that. We want to avoid premature cash outlays. And so we that what does that require is that because you want to go to a place and you don't want to jump into contracting space, you can't sell the space, you have these tight deadlines, you haven't already uh, pre-sold the space, uh, so to speak, or you don't have that flexibility. So we really want to avoid that in the way that we market or select trips or suppliers. We really want to have the numbers identified or really understood before we start depositing or putting out huge amounts of cash um, associated with these signature trips. And really the last thing is we want to do demand driven contracting. And what that means is that we only want to contract space based on demonstrated demand. And simply put, that means that we know that we've got people who want to buy. We don't want to contract space first and then go figure out if we've got people to buy. So we want to, again, make sure that that is um, gauged on early marketing efforts interest registration or past experiences with similar trips. That means you've already sold it in the past and you know that it sold well in the past and this then becomes a good signature trip. So this approach really is going to help prevent situations where you're left with, you know, a contract that you've already put a, you know, a deposit on, you can't get the deposit back. You really want to make sure that you've done some planning from a financial perspective and you've got some interest before you uh, put any um, major financial commitments on in the business on this trip. You want to ensure that your trips are profitable, your cash flow is managed, and that your financial risks are minimized. By focusing on these strategies, this will really allow you to create financially successful trips and make sure you've got happy customers in the process. So let's talk about uh, supplier. How do you identify new partnerships or leverage existing partnerships? So the first thing is we obviously we need partners in order to make this happen. Um, this is essential uh, part of your strategy for working with the right kind of suppliers. This is going to really impact your ability to manage your cash flow effectively, ensure that you've got sound financial health when it comes to your offers and create amazing experiences as well. So the importance, the first thing is making sure that you've got flexible suppliers. So when you're interviewing suppliers, if you're working with suppliers, this cannot be overstated. You want to look for those partners that you understand the nuances of what the payment terms are going to be, right? When are the refund? When, you know, how much time do you have for refund? Um, do they allow for late payments? Do you have reduced deposits that you can? Um, are there lenient cancellation policies? I want you to understand that 
your supplier's cancellation policy doesn't necessarily have to equate to your cancellation policies. They do not have to be one and the same, but you want to manage your cash flow. So you want to make sure that you understand what your supplier is requiring versus what you have as your own cancellation policy within your business. You want to negotiate for cash flow. This really makes sure that you are positioned in the best possible way. Um, so seek out suppliers that will allow you to have arrangements that allow you to defer payments or make smaller deposits. This will allow you to reduce initial financial burden and help maintain positive cash flow, allows you to invest your funds in marketing and other crucial areas of your business. So an example of that would be um, there's one of our vendors, Culture Holiday, where they allow you to reserve space um, for 30 days. So you can uh, reserve a block of space with a very small deposit and market for 30 days. And based on how that marketing goes, you can reduce the held space and get it down to something. So let's say you reserve 30 spots and based on your 30 days of marketing, you realize that you've got maybe, you know, 15 or 10 spots, whatever that initial marketing does, you're not you didn't have to put down um, a deposit for 30 reservations. So that is a really good example of working with the supplier that allows you to reserve the space, get the price locked in, but only have a small initial deposit to reserve that space. You want to minimize your upfront code. Uh, cost. That example that I just gave you is a good example of that. Uh, particularly uh, this particular vendor, you can reserve, I think, up to 30 uh, blocks and only do a $200 deposit. This is a perfect example of how your minimum deposit, your upfront cost is minimal. You've reserved and blocked the space out, but you don't have a huge cash outlay. Remember, Effective collaboration with suppliers is not just going to get you the best prices, but also get you partnerships that support your financial strategies inside of your travel business. Focus on these aspects when it comes to uh, selecting suppliers. Make sure that not only are the suppliers giving you great financial terms, but also test out the suppliers and make sure that they can deliver according to the way that your brand wants to uh create experiences for your clients. Discovery trips are great ways to do this as well. You want to also leverage your supplier resources. So do they have marketing materials? Is there destination information? Will the suppliers come and speak to your audience of people? We do this often where we uh, work with the suppliers to come and do destination deep dives, particularly if it's a destination I've not personally been to. You want to utilize your suppliers in that way, utilize the resources that they have so that you can um, use that in your marketing efforts and also in your engagement efforts and also add value to your clients in your particular offer. What we've covered so far is making sure that you have a clear understanding of financial trip planning. Make sure you understand what the cash commitments are. You don't want to prematurely outlay cash and you want to negotiate that with your suppliers and leverage your supplier resources because they have a lot of the content and resources that you need in terms of really immersive destination information. If you're using a destination management company or using a tour operator, make sure that you understand what kind of resources are available and make sure that you're negotiating with for cash flexibility and reservation flexibility. So now let's talk about objective three, where we're going to review how to utilize effective marketing and sales strategy for your signature offer. Let's talk about promotion cycles. The first, uh, we're going to start around having a structured cycle for promotion. This is going to be a key element in successful marketing your travel offers. This approach involves a methodical way to promote your, to create a plan for promotion, focusing on different stages leading up to the final trip date. The first is, is you want to have 
promotion strategy that really highlights the unique aspects of each destination to make sure that you've got your audience interested, right? Uh, the destination itself should be the star of your marketing content, drawing travelers in to its appeal. Your content strategy should be around your signature destination um, from the perspective of attracting new leads interested in these destinations. So that first promotion cycle is really around and the content is really around attracting. I advocate that you do three cycles, a 12 month, nine month and six month. I've also been known to do more cycles where the first, you know, initial launch is going to be 12 to 18 months out. The next one will either be two months later or three months later um, and then six months later. And this is really driven around the first payment due date. We want to make sure that we've got uh, these specific cycle points where we're, we're actually marketing hard at these three different cycles. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't do ongoing sales, but when it comes to actually creating uh, a buzz or, you know, a hyper intensity around sales, we actually have cycles with start and end dates around these times. Now, these are recommended times. Doesn't mean that you can't do eight months, seven months. Again, the timing is not as critical as much as the number of cycles. We don't ever just promote one thing one time. We promote multiple times a destination um, around that. So we want to have event driven marketing, which really means that you're going to be hosting webinars, challenges, information sessions that really uh, focus on your ability to get attendees to these events, um, get signups for these events, and that these are going to uh, really allow you to uh, show the value to potential travelers why these destinations are really great and they really give you call to actions for um, enrollment into your signature destinations and again if you're not doing group trips it's okay because you can really do um destination highlights i call them signature itinerary promotions where for you know at you know you know, uh, quarter one, you're going to promote destination one and in its itinerary. And instead of selling group trips or space into group trips, you're selling discovery calls and getting people to enroll in discovery calls so they can book itineraries that are equal to the destination that you're talking like a five day or seven day itinerary, or you can get them into, we can customize an itinerary that's similar to the one that we're talking about. Now, again, I've already mentioned that you can do ongoing enrollment to even if you've got a 12, six and um, a 12, nine and six month launch, you can still do ongoing enrollment by offering the signature uh, trip on your website. Um, and so anybody that visits your website, you can retarget them with email ads or Facebook or, you know, some sort of paid advertising for anybody who goes to those trips. So having ongoing enrollment is certainly something that you can do by offering it on your website, on your social media pages as well. The point here really is, is that you want to be focused and intentional around your promotion of your signature trips, either as signature itineraries or signature group trips that you're going to allow people the opportunity to buy in or enroll in. And you don't want to be sporadic. You don't want to be, you know, sporadic around how you talk about this. This is really intentional and focused on getting sales at specific points throughout the year. Um, following the structured approach, you're going to be more likely to capture and retain your audience's attention around attracting particular people who are interested in these destinations and leading to more successful enrollments. So the last thing that we want to talk about is really around setting and achieving booking goals. So while it's important to sell, to set booking targets, I'm more, more, 
What's more important from my perspective is that you focus on activities that lead to sales, right? So we can say that we want to sell 30, 30 seats into a group trip, right? We can have, you know, I want to sell 20 spots, right? But what's more important is not the 20 spots, but that you have activities built around ensuring that you can sell those 20 spots. So we want to, I want to make sure that you've not only set realistic goals, but that you've got the right metrics in place that's going to prioritize the actions that are going to lead to sales. So we want realistic goals. This involves understanding your market and understanding your client base, understanding Particularly if you're doing a discovery um, a trip, you don't have a past performance, but if you're doing trips that you sold before, you will have some past performance to help you understand um, if the goals that you're setting are realistic. You want to be able to track your metrics. I always say do not create a thing without promoting a thing. Do not promote a thing without tracking a thing. So making sure that you understand which metrics are important to track, like leads. How many leads are you getting? How many attendees are you getting? How many registrations are you getting? These are all critical metrics for you to be tracking um, inside of your trips. We want to make sure that you're focused on sales dr driven activities. And so this is really around, for example, if you host a, let's say you're selling Africa and you are going to host a webinar information trip on your signature Africa trip, right? What's an important thing for you to, uh, a, an important sales activity is the fact that you actually host the webinar, right? Or the information session. Registrations are going to be important. Attendees are going to be important. Your follow-up sequence, these are all sales-driven activities, right? Because those are numbers that you can track and make sure and we can we can we can um, make decisions based on those numbers right if you host a webinar and you only get two registrations right the problem is not the webinar it's probably your marketing of the webinar let's say you get a, a hundred registrations but only two people attend Where's the problem? The problem isn't, again, the webinar. It's probably your follow-up sequence in terms of making sure that people get attendance to your um, event, right? And then how many sales that you get, right? This is all a numbers game, making sure that you've got the right activities that are going to drive sales are going to be critical. Focusing on engagement, right? A lot of um, advisors, they post on social media and they're like, yeah, I, I've got this Africa trip and nobody is, nobody is in, you know, nobody uh, bought my trip, right? I would say who's on your social media account, right? Did you, you know, are you creating engagement or are you just selling, right? So we want to make sure that we are providing content that our clients want, right? And so when we build these signature trips, we want to ensure that we give them opportunities to engage. Having information sessions that have registrations is a perfect example of engagement. So we want to build interest. We want make we want to make sure that we provide opportunities for our clients to see us as the expert in those destinations that and those activities are ultimately going to lead to booking decisions for your client. We want to adopt conversion strategies. So every action in your marketing plan should have a clear purpose and a path to conversion, right? So we don't want to just post on social media a post and say that we have a trip, an Africa trip for sale, right? I would do that as the last step after I've done all this activity on the front end. Like I've had information sessions, I've, I, I've had blogs, I've had videos around the destination. And then at the end, we have a launch cycle that's focused on inviting those people that have participated to actually book. 
conversion is your name. So if you don't know what conversion is, we're really going to be working on that this month in this series is really understanding what a conversion is, not only from a sale, but also from a lead. How many leads are we getting? How many people are we getting that are engaging with our content? How many people are clicking and booking, right? Conversion is going to be the name of the game. Remember having successful booking goals are achieved not by just getting an end sale by, but by nurturing people along the way, right? Getting leads and people who are interested in your offers up front, selling to them on the back end becomes so much easier. So we've talked about having an intentional focused promotion strategy, and then setting goals that are around not only sales, but also around sales activities that are going to lead to sales. So in this master class, we've really talked about strategy. We've talked about your strategic planning and destination, that making sure that you select destinations that are built around you, that you understand those destinations and that you've researched those destinations and that you've planned them accordingly, that you've thought about your financial outlay, your cash outlay. You've got the right partners to help you with getting maximizing not only your profitability, but also your cash and that you've got marketing strategies around promoting and setting the right goals that are going to lead it to the most amount of sales. So what I want you to do now is below this training, there is a destination guide for you, to, a destination selection guide. Click on that. I want you to pick three to five destinations that you want to learn about or that you've already sold that are good so that when we meet in our next lesson, we've got some destinations already ready to go to build out our destination roadmap. So what we're going to be doing in the next lesson is developing your actual destination roadmap. We can actually show you how to do that and um, use the template to do that so that we can build out a 12 to 18 month, not only what are you gonna sell, but also a promotion roadmap to match. And I will see you in the next lesson. Let me know in comments if you have any questions and do not hesitate to reach out. I'll talk to you soon.